how should we design learning experiences that are connected and collaborative? I think we should start by asking what work, what learning work is interest driven, mm. right? And what does that mean to you, interest driven? So, you know, it could be if students walk into my class and I ask them what they're interested in, they write, some of them write profound things that move you. Other, other youth with that simple prompt just say, oh, I like movies, I like soccer, and I like, you know, I like hanging out with my friends on the weekend. Yep. Right? Um, still, though, when, you know, we ask youth then to consider some of the civic topics that are debated in our, in our culture right now. They, and then we ask them which ones are most interesting, their answers get a little deeper, right? Or if we walk around Rangeview and we ask, we ask like a freshman, you know, we show them some of the interest-driven work, whether it's the, uh, the tech interns or, you know, a student that's taking AP computer science and is really interested in it, you know, a student who says they're not interested in school, if they see other students doing interest-driven learning, all of a sudden that might spur their interests. So we should never accept that first, that first like answer that seems surface. Similarly with teachers, you know, if they, if we ask them what's most interesting to them about their classrooms, we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't like accept the surface answer that they might give us. Mm. You know, we should go deeper in terms of like what really are they curious about that gets them out of bed. How do you go deeper stuff. with kids? How do you go deeper with yeah. kids? I think. Um, you, knowing that they'll have the motivation to go go deeper if there is in fact an interest and then just try to be authentic right because if you're authentically interested in a topic then you will be increasingly you know driven to pursue that topic at first like a novice would regardless of your age sure and you'll always be interested in how the experts approach it whether you have a better idea or you just want to tag along with the experts I think Helping, helping make explicit that continuum between novice and expert in an interest-driven area. Making explicit the path between novice and expert in an interest-driven model. Yes. That's the way in which you support kids in, in sort of being able to, to make the connections. Yes. And I think that I might just add an aside the badging in particular is a way to name that pathway, right? From so, novice to expertise. Perhaps, right? I mean, the idea that badges become data is just one way. But the idea that like when badges become data, that data might be, you know, you could do anything with that data, but you could make it into um, explicit pathways that, you know, if historically we've understood five pathways, well, if we get a really rich data set, then in the 21st century, we can understand highly complex pathways mm. because we're tracking the paths of interest-driven learners from novice to expert. That's what I think. Mm. And do you see a connection there between sort of that path and sort of the, the plans of, of students, or is that something different for you? Yeah, I think that if you ask, similarly with the interest-driven learning, if you ask somebody what their plan is and they're not invested in, you know, or if they don't have the context or you know the the skill to name a plan you know in a deep way right then helping them see that there's all kinds of possible plans and maybe even seeing those path pathways articulated suggest multiple plans so the idea that we make those things explicit and so somebody who has a surface understanding of a plan we honor that and value that and we also make sure that they they're operating in a system where Plan, or where plans and pathways are really just like it's easy to choose because the road signs are, are like in our face and right. they're probably in our own language mm. you know, that kind of thing yeah I like that the, the idea that, that students come to understand it as they go through it yeah okay so I feel like you've definitely tackled this question I'm interested in which 
questions are plaguing you? What are the questions that you keep on coming back to and that you are continuing to grapple with, even as you are, you know, assuming a new role or, or different yeah. things like that? But what's a question that keeps on resonating for you? I think that the, uh, the idea of, you know, taking that sort of like, you know, if you're looking at interest driven learning and you look at sort of like, you know, the motivational components of it, like, how do you, first of all, I always know I'm going to find it. So when I walk around range view, I always find interest driven learning. And then how do you take sort of like the curiosity that's inherent in it yeah. and how do you take that to scale? Cause I don't want, I'm, I'm thinking about like curiosity and those learners who are like, quote unquote, scratching their, you know, their learning itches. Sure. How do you take that curiosity and those behaviors to scale? That's what drives me. How do you take students, adults, their curiosity and take it to scale? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that, that question of, of sort of um, both sort of finding the interest and cultivating it into sort of the, the thing that allows for scale, the thing that, uh, um, you know, accelerates. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of value in, in us answering that as, as a system and, uh, and as individual schools. I really appreciate your time. Thank oh, you so of course, much. Ben. Of course, anytime.